Hi, I'm Chad, and this is my AGV AX9 Carbon. Now I've owned this helmet for about a month and a half already, and before I get into too much detail, I really like it a lot. It's a really cool looking helmet and great for adventure riding or supermoto riding as I do with my 2009 Yamaha WR250X that is behind me. So the reason that I bought this helmet, I really wanted to complete the supermoto look. A helmet like this has been on my list of things to buy for a while, and during the holiday season, I just decided to pull the trigger and treat myself a little bit. So as the helmet's name suggests, it uses an entirely carbon fiber shell, which is awesome because it makes it super lightweight and means that it also has a lot of tensile strength. So the likelihood of it actually breaking or cracking in a crash is really low. But beyond that, it just looks absolutely gorgeous if you ask me. I mean, this thing really is just a work of adventure art. It's beautiful. So my helmet, as you probably noticed, has the Iridium Mirror Shield, which is awesome and also an AGV product. One of the things I really like about the shield is it takes a pin lock, just like the standard clear shield does. So you don't have to worry about your shield fogging up and can leave it down all the time. It's not an issue. Some of the other key features of this helmet include the peak, this big bill thing that's up on the top here. It's designed to provide shade and block the sun from coming directly into your eyes when it is low in the sky. This helmet also has a ton ton of vents. It's got two brow vents, as they call them, that are up on the top of the helmet, just above your forehead, as well as two exit vents in the back. And then in the front, down in front of your mouth, is actually the most customizable vent that I have ever personally seen on a helmet. So there's a plastic cover, and with that you can open a vent, but you can also remove this piece entirely. And when you do that, you'll see that there is a piece of foam that further blocks airflow. So you can remove that piece of foam to give you some additional ventilation, but if that's still not cutting it, you just remove the thing entirely and you have the most massive transparent vent I think I've ever seen in a motorcycle helmet. So really cool feature. Something else that's awesome about this helmet is you can remove the shield and the mechanism for it entirely. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I had to do that to install the new shield. It's actually really easy to do, just required a flathead screwdriver and took maybe two or three minutes. But if you wanted to use this helmet like a true dirt bike or motocross helmet, you can very easily just remove the shield and slap your goggles on over your eyes. It's pretty rad. A couple other key features are a water resistant neck liner. So if you are going to adventure riding and off on a trail or something, and you're splashing water, mud, dirt, all up over the place, the water, the muddy water, it's not gonna soak up into your cheek pads or at least not as easily. So that's a plus if you're into that type of riding. It also has a really soft and plush little chin curtain here and the cheek padding in this helmet is super soft. Very, very top notch and high quality. The cheek pads and the headliner are moisture wicking too, which is awesome because as you sweat, that's just gonna kind of wick away from you instead of staying around, maybe dripping down, getting in your eyes or just being uncomfortable overall. And something else that's really cool about this is it is set up to take either a Cena or an AGV ArcCom headset. So you pull the pads out a little bit, you can see that there is a little Velcro piece to take the speakers themselves. And there's actually some routing in the EPS foam for the wires for that as well. So very awesome that this helmet is basically ready to take a comm straight out of the box. I know that's becoming more common and standard with helmets nowadays, but I started riding back in the time where it would take you like an hour to figure out how to mount your comm inside your helmet, do a nice wire tuck and everything. It's really great to see that the helmet manufacturers have adopted that technology and plan for it when designing a product. But enough about the features of the helmet. Let me tell you a little bit about what it's like to wear and ride with. I'm a sport bike rider primarily. I have a Triumph Daytona 675R that I take to the racetrack and club race with. And I also have an Aprilia Tuono V4 factory. And anytime I'm riding either of those bikes, I'm wearing a, your typical sport bike helmet. Something that's got a very aerodynamic profile, lightweight, good range of visibility. So that's what I'm coming from with this. And I have to say, this helmet is Quite a bit different, as you could probably tell. It's 
Not as aerodynamic, obviously. It's very flat in the front with this big vent here. In addition to that, it also has the high peak, which is actually really cool because you can remove this and also angle it differently. So very customizable, but with the peak on, it does add some wind resistance and tends to make the helmet lift a little bit at speeds above 60 miles per hour. But if you're off on a trail or riding out in the desert or something, that lift might not be that big of a deal because you might not get up to speeds much above that. But riding around on the highways and stuff, it is noticeable. That said, if you are going on a touring bike or something that does have a tall screen, I could imagine that would probably counteract the effects that the Peak has in terms of helmet lift. It's not really like it's gonna rip off of your face. You just feel a little bit of pressure on your cheeks and your chin as the helmet kind of lifts a little bit. But I've been on the highway multiple times, traveling at the speed of traffic, and it's not dangerous at all or anything that I would be super concerned about. Just something to be aware of in case you're not used to it. But beyond the aerodynamics, the comfort of the helmet itself is top notch. As I mentioned before, this uses a very, very nice neck roll and a very soft cheek liner and head liner. So it feels awesome when it's on your head. But ventilation, as you saw, especially with the uber customizable front vent, this thing flows air super, super, super well, which has actually been kind of unfortunate as of late because it's been cold here. I've got nothing on the people that are back east or even out in the Midwest. Here in California, it doesn't get that cold, relatively speaking, but for me, the temperatures that we're seeing lately, which are around 60 degrees or below, especially when I'm going out riding, it's usually in the high mid 50s, sometimes in the low 50s. And I actually wore this helmet once in the mid 40s at night. And it might have even been closer to the uh, low 40s or the high 30s going out back through the canyon by my place. Uh, it does cool down a lot there at night. And this thing flows so much air. Even with all of the vents closed, including the front vents, having the foam cushion filter in there, I was just getting cold air in my face. So going into the summer months and the spring, this is gonna be really, really, really nice because it's gonna keep you cool, but I would definitely recommend a balaclava or wearing something underneath it that would keep your face a little bit warmer and possibly just prevent the cold air from really reaching most of your face. So the last thing that I wanna talk about with this is the visibility out of the helmet. Now this is something that I don't think a lot of people think about, but I've worn a lot of different types of helmets in my time riding motorcycles and Visibility is something that I've really come to appreciate because I've noticed that there can be a huge difference in this from one helmet to another. For example, the first helmet that I owned was an AGV K4 Evo, and that helmet, if you were like full tuck on your sport bike, trying to touch your chin to the tank, the helmet would be completely blocking your vision. You just couldn't do it. But now that I've experienced Corsas and Pista GPs that have a much wider field of view, I can really appreciate being able to look around in a lot of different directions without having to move my head much and still getting a clear picture. So one of the things that exceeded my expectations was the visibility out of the helmet. Now the visibility downwards to your dash is not gonna be super awesome because this comes up and kind of blocks it. So you do need to look down a little bit to be able to see what's going on on your dash. But the forward visibility, your peripheral visibility, and your upward visibility is fantastic. You can see so much without even turning your neck. It's really incredible. It actually reminds me a lot of my piece to GPRR. That helmet has an incredible range of view just like that. It does also have a very tall profile down at the bottom of the helmet. So you do need to be tucked and close to your instruments if you wanna be able to see them or kind of have them like a little bit higher up or have your face be a little bit closer to that part of the bike. But in terms of everything else, you can really see any, everything and the helmet itself doesn't really obscure anything or get in the way of your vision, which is really, really nice. So in a lot of ways, I really think that this is just the adventure slash enduro slash supermoto version of the Pista GPRR. It's an awesome helmet. It's super, super, super lightweight. I wish I had a number for you guys, but honestly, I can hardly tell a difference in weight between this and my Pista GPRR, which is also a fully carbon fiber race helmet. Kudos to AGV on that. I really like this helmet a lot, and if you're into supermoto riding or enduro or adventure riding, I highly recommend checking this out. It's an expensive helmet at $649.99, and if you want the Iridium Mirror Shield like I have here, which I think is totally worth it, because, I mean, come on. 
This thing looks so cool. But if you want the Iridium Mirror Shield, you're gonna have to shell out an additional $120. So it's not the cheapest helmet out there, but given the features, the functionality, the fit and finish, the comfort, and just the overall quality of the helmet, I think it's worth it. So definitely would recommend. If I had to give it stars, I'd say probably four and a half out of five. But anyways, that's gonna do it for me in this one. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a gentle little click of the like button and consider subscribing for more motorcycling content. Also drop a comment below. What did you think about this video? This is the first kind of gear review that I've ever done before. I own a lot of different pieces of motorcycle gear. I'd be happy to continue doing videos like this and have multiple things I could share my experiences with and thoughts on. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more gear reviews like this one. Again, thanks for watching and I will hope to catch you in the next one. Until then, later.